Dust dances on silky strings of moonlight, filtering through the embroidered drapes. Softened footsteps, the only break, from the sound of trees rustling in the wind outside. Careful. One foot here. Skip that one. Then up to the windowsill. Viren, nimbly making his way down the hallway. A living shadow melding into the various tapestries and overtly ornate paintings lining the walls. Jump over the squeaky boards. Two steps to the left. Almost there. The hallway and moonlight fade into the backdrop of the night. A pair of intricately carved wooden doors loom overhead, wearing the weight of the years as badges. I could leave. Go back to my room. Let everything return to how it was. Viren's hand slowly reaching towards the door, lightly tracing its fine carvings. Life can be easy. Simple answers. No questions. No worries. Then why am I still doing this? Life won't be easy by turning back. It's already complicated. Sorry, Gareth. But I need this. The lock bested, the study doors voicing a final warning, creaking loudly on their aged hinges. The air taking on a pungent scent of rose and other fineries as wisps of incense weave into the hallway. Faint, ever-luminescent candlelight bathing the floor-to-ceiling bookshelves in a faint orange glow. <coughs> <sighs> I know Gareth prefers his perfumes when working, but even this is excessive. I've never gotten a good chance to look at this place. Shame I... Don't have the time to do it justice. Of course he'd lock these two. Honestly, I'm not sure if my paranoia is rubbing off on him or the other way around. Finally. Small book, various folders, and a small safe. Gareth really does try to keep things under wraps. Where is it? Norm Thrill? No Rift Weep? Mm-mm. Chronoflux. Is it not in here? These are just names and dates. Why would Gareth lock up a booklet like this? Is that a portrait? He looks so much younger. I don't recognize who he's with. I know he used to have a wife, but he never talks about his past. This could just be an old colleague of his for all I know. Okay, it's not here. Stop prying into his private life. Time for the next drawer. The night weighed upon his eyes as the doubts burdened his mind. I must have searched through everything here at least twice and still nothing. If anyone in this strangle vine of a town knows about it, it's him. If it's not in his desk, then where would it be? There are too many books to parse through. There has to be some identifier of what I'm looking for. Wait, is that... Majorot! Finally! Caused by overtaxing one's arcane abilities? Yeah, that sounds like it. Aha! Uh -huh. Ingredients! And a treatment procedure! Okay, I got what I need. Now to just put everything back. Though hastened in his actions, Viren reassembled the room back to some semblance of normalcy methodically sneaking through the intricate halls, the darkness breathing an uncanny stillness to them. All that's left is to get back to my room and leave everyone none the wiser. I better make sure this is tucked away well. No one should be up at this ungodly hour. Just gotta keep quiet. Silently, he made his way back to the small room he had begun to call home. Hello, young Viren. What might you be doing up so late at night? Viren's feet locked to the floor as if nailed in place. The familiar voice calling to him from the main corridor. Just getting back from a midnight stroll. I had a lot on my mind, and I thought it would help me get some sleep. Ah, 
Yes. I'm sure you must be worried. It is only natural. Would you care for me to put on a spot of tea for you? Perhaps a cold glass of water to help calm your nerves? I appreciate it. Really. I should be fine, though. The fresh air really helped. I understand, young sir. Though if you need anything, I shall be but a call away. Okay. Thank you, Amos. Good night. Shit. Shit, shit, shit! How can I be so careless? Was he always in the main hall? I didn't see him when I walked past. He couldn't have. He would have seen me come from the stairwell, not outside. Looks like I need to leave sooner than I had planned. Can't risk him asking about it tomorrow once people are up. I'm only packing what I need. Basic anatomy of humanoids, horticulture and herbalism, my notes on treating wounds and common illnesses. Good. I think my medical tools and practice gods should be in my nightstand. That old hunting knife couldn't hurt either. The food I've been stashing should last me a few days, at least until I reach Fayetteville. A few extra pairs of clothes, ink, pen, and journal. I could use the rope to bring my sheets and blanket with me. It probably won't be an ideal travel bed, but it should work to keep me dry if it ever rains. As the brisk night air spilled through the window, the night sky lay sprawled before him. The Lady of the Moon illuminating the night with her pale omniscience. I don't expect Gareth to forgive me. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be pissed when he gets back. I just... I hope he understands. Without another moment of hesitation, Viren stole himself into the night, making the slow trod to the outer edges of the village, going to the run-down fence he used to cross as a kid. No guards? Oh, okay. Not like they really care about the outskirts that much anyway. I've burned every door to my future tonight. <laughs> Funny. Get it together. There's no going back. No regrets. It's time I make a choice for once. The early morning light filled the local fields with life, crops dancing in time with the breeze. Rom made his way towards the sentry post, a familiar individual standing guard outside. Morning, Phelan. How was the night watch? Unproductive, as per usual. Maybe you should try it sometime. Though, someone stopped by earlier. Something for the chief, but not my business. <laughs> and become a living corpse like you? <laughs> I'll pass. Any clue what the person wanted? Not really. Just someone with some fancy clothes. Why? Well, no real reason. Just curious, is all. Seriously, how do you manage those graveyard shifts? Barely, that's how. Now get in there so the chief can send <laughs> me home. Okay, okay. Hey, chief, I'm here. Can the zombie go home? Oh, Rom. Yes, yes, he can go. Lady Salafana knows that boy works hard enough. Chief says beat it. Finally! Rom, get in here. What is it? You've been requested for special detail. Grab your gear and head to the Gareth estate. Yes, sir. Did Viren request me? The young soldier soon found himself within the northern district. Gareth's estate stretching far higher than most houses he was accustomed to. Ah, I take it you're Rom. I don't believe I ever got to talk with you personally. Uh, no, I don't believe we have. Pardon me but asking, but did Viren call me here? The North End has its own security detail, so I don't see any reason to request me specifically. I was the one who requested you, actually. Gareth is currently in Archrisglen, assisting with their mild outbreak of Kythus. Viren was left behind to focus on his studies. Did you want more people to watch the estate in Gareth's absence? Uh, sorry, I, I, I still don't see why you needed me, specifically. I was actually hoping you could find him. I encountered him last night walking around far later than normal. He seemed to be shaken over some of the recent news about Adolin. His need for fresh air made sense at the time, though come this morning, I found him missing. With many things from his room as well. So Viren has disappeared and you want me to find him? 
I feel like that's a job better suited to the entire watch, not just me. After scouring the estate to ensure I hadn't missed him or anything else, I found Gareth's private study unlocked. The only thing I was able to find missing from Gareth's internal log of items was a few pages torn from an old medical journal of his. I believe they were about her illness. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I'll look around for him. I already have a few places in mind. Uh, keep looking around here, and I'll be back by midday. Please be at the climbing tree. Oh, Thawmil, help me.